Hello, my name is James Murphy. I'm the Managing Director of the Orchestra South Bank Sinfonia. And I was invited to give the following provocation live at the Association of British Orchestras Conference in Bournemouth on Thursday the 26th of January 2017. I want to talk about gender inequality among conductors. Some of you are probably thinking, didn't we already address this a few years back? Well, let's quickly go back to 2013 to remind ourselves. Back then, this conductor, who needs no introduction, said some broad, inadvertent remarks about female conductors, and it prompted a media furore, with everyone rushing to say how much we all prize and value female conductors as much as men. We turned into quite the angry mob. But then, this conductor, who also needs no introduction, became the first woman to conduct the last night of the BBC proms, where she said some soothing words, whilst remarking her surprise that there could still be firsts for women. About the same time, a new scheme was set up for teenage girls to try their hand at conducting, to strengthen that pathway. And we all breathed a sigh of relief. Almost getting back up to date, early last year, two significant things happened. Firstly, this conductor, Shen Zheng, became principal guest conductor of the BBC National Orchestra of Wales, the first time a female conductor has ever been given a titled role at a BBC orchestra. The next month, this conductor, Mirga Grajanite Tila, became principal conductor of the City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra. Much cause for celebration, so why am I here raising the issue again? Earlier last year, I received a letter from a conductor looking for work. Reading it, I was struck by a line which said, I'm writing to you because I see your orchestra hires female conductors. I had to read that again. Don't we all hire female conductors, I wondered. I decided to look into this and would like to share some of my findings with you. Don't worry, I'm not going to call out those orchestras who haven't hired any female conductors lately, though there are quite a number of you. Instead, we'll focus on some broader issues. So, there are 61 full member orchestras of the Association of British Orchestras. Between them, they currently offer about 100 titled roles for conductors. How many of these orchestras do you think, right now, have female conductors in any of those titled roles? Four. And here's something even more startling. This time last year, not one of those women was in that role. In fact, back then another orchestra had a female conductor in a titled role, but her tenure has now come to an end. So hey, if we look at it like this, minus one, plus four every year, then it's only going to take about 25 years till we all maybe have a female conductor on staff. Here's another thing to consider. Let's have a look at all the female principal conductors of British orchestras there have been over the last 20 years. Well, there's Mirga, of course. And before that, Joanne Folletta at Ulster in 2011. And before that, Marin Alsop at Bournemouth in 2002. And before that, oh, in 20 years, that's it. Now, the orchestras might well say, we'd love to take on more female conductors, but the artist managers just aren't representing that many. Is this true? I decided to have a look at artist managers in Britain representing five or more conductors and see what the gender split looks like. Here are the big six. As you'll see, yellow dots represent male conductors, purple dots represent female conductors. I'll let you take that in for a moment. Now here's the next bunch. As I say, yellow dots male, purple dots female. As that's a lot to absorb, I've put it all together in one graphic which looks like this. And if you'd like that as a percentage, it's 5.5%. Now, the artist managers might well say, we'd love to take on more female conductors, but there just aren't that many emerging. Well, this is where we come to what's called a grassroots issue. You're likely familiar with the term. It means essentially that the real work needs doing in schools and colleges to nurture the talent in young people, so it's at the level we need, ready to pick from the trees, when they reach maturity. Too often, and I've done this myself before, we use the term grassroots as an excuse, a get-out clause. Oh, I can't do anything about that myself because it's a grassroots issue. Fortunately, Someone who did decide to do something about it is this conductor, Alice Farnham, who, back in 2013, as I mentioned, decided entirely of her own volition to set up a programme to get more teenage girls interested in conducting. She got this going at Morley College, and as it's grown, I'm pleased to say the Royal Philharmonic Society has now taken it on. 
It simply entails, every few months, a number of teenage girls with some basic interest in making music, getting together to be coached by Alice and other female professionals, with the chance then to conduct some orchestral players. Usually from my orchestra, Southbank Symphonia, but as the programme has spread, a couple of other orchestras have pitched in too. Alice isn't the only one doing something. Marin Alsop, of course, set up the Taki Concordia Fellowship in the States for emerging female conductors. She's also this month doing a conducting workshop especially for women with the BBC Concert Orchestra at Southbank Centre. Meanwhile, Dallas Opera has remarkably set up the Dallas Institute for Women Conductors, which took in its first cohort last year, and we look forward to seeing how that develops. Does all this grassroots activity permit us then to sit back in our deck chairs and wait till this new infantry of female conductors has taken shape? I was talking lately to Lucy Kerbel, the director of Tonic Theatre, a company established to address gender inequality in the theatre world. Lately, the Royal Opera House took Lucy on to review its own approach to the matter. Her report for the Royal Opera House addressed some of the apparent barriers for women becoming conductors. Of all the young women Lucy interviewed, a unifying message emerged. I didn't see anyone like me doing it, so I didn't imagine I could ever do it myself. Which brings me to the issue of role models and this conductor, Elim Chan, who in 2014 won the LSO Donatella Flick Conducting Competition. Great stuff. And yet, two years later, all 20 finalists in the 2016 competition were male. How could that be? It's great that the LSO gave Elam the chance to conduct some of their Discovery concerts as part of her prize. After all, it means a young audience would get to see a woman on the podium and think it entirely normal. But we have to go one better than that, and I'm pleased to hear the LSO will next season give Elam a concert in its main series. It's remarkable, when you look through all the British orchestra's listings in search of female conductors, when you eventually find one, more often than not, she's been assigned to do something like a kids' concert in the afternoon, somewhere like Penge West. What sort of message does this send to the participants on Alice and Marin's programmes about the career possibilities available to them? By scarcely giving female conductors our best gigs, are we being sexist? Well, I'd like to think not. My feeling is we've just got a rather bad case of what's called unconscious bias. You probably know the term. It means we're doing something without quite realising we're doing it. And when it comes to giving men all the best opportunities in classical music, who can blame us? The whole history of classical music is male. All the composers, all the conductors. Even if you Google silhouette of a conductor, you only get blokes. Now, as Lucy Kerbel says, there's nothing wrong with having unconscious bias. What's wrong is not doing anything about it. What, though, can we do? A few weeks ago, I was discussing a project with Southbank Centre, and they told me it's their new policy, all else being equal, to ask whether we might first consider a female conductor for a project. I thought about this and discussed it with my own colleagues. We kind of admired it. It certainly seemed bold. And yet, in the same breath, isn't there a risk that by doing this we'd be sexist ourselves, putting a woman forward because she's a woman, denying a man the opportunity because he's a man? This, of course, is called positive action, and it's something I've grappled with quite a bit. But I've come to a realisation. We all want a society in which we don't even have to think or talk anymore in terms of male or female conductors. But this won't just magically happen. Nobody else is going to do it for us. If we want to improve the frankly embarrassing statistics I've shared with you, we, the custodians of classical music, have to take some kind of action, for the time being, to tip the scales. To make sure we are really giving a chance to those who really deserve a chance. Which brings me to why I'm here speaking to you today. This, ladies and gentlemen, is not a women's issue. This is not something we leave to the few brilliant women who run organisations in our sector to sort out at a breakfast. And while we're on the subject, broadcasters, this is not something you just address once a year on International Women's Day. This is something we all have to actively address together. And I don't just mean those of you like me who run orchestras. All of you, tell your line manager you want to work for an organisation that moves with the times and actively strives for some kind of equality. 
For my part, last year I asked myself, beyond those conductors we're already obliged to work with, how near might I get to equality, drawing from the long list of talented male and female conductors I've wanted us to work with? And you know what? I did it. An equal number of male and female conductors. Two things worth noting about this. Firstly, it wasn't difficult to achieve. At all. Secondly, they were all equally brilliant. An endeavour like this need not entail any compromise of quality or artistry. Let's just focus for a moment on a few of these conductors. Firstly, Rebecca Miller. As you can see, Rebecca has conducted the Orchestra of the Age of Enlightenment, the BBC Concert Orchestra, the London Philharmonic Orchestra, the Royal Northern Symphony, the BBC National Orchestra of Wales, the BBC Symphony Orchestra, the London Mozart Players. She's conducted a BBC Prom even, and she's our associate conductor at Southbank Symphonia. And yet, no British artist manager has taken her on. What more does she have to do? Next, Natalia Lewis Basser. I've had Natalia the last three years, and each time our players have loved her rigour and our audiences have loved her passion. She's been on the TV. She's an exceptional educationalist. She came second in Lauren Marzell's major international conducting competition. And yet, no British artist manager has taken her on. And then there's Holly Matheson. Holly is one of the four female conductors in a titled role at an ABO orchestra. And yet, no British artist manager has taken her on, while each year we see boys just out of university or music college with no comparative experience being signed up for management. I urge you all to hire these three fantastic conductors, and if you'd like some more suggestions, here's a list of 113 female conductors working today who you might also like to consider, as well as the boys. This list was compiled back in 2013 by the writer Jessica Duchenne, who has been a tireless campaigner for this issue for years. You can find the list on her blog, and handily with it, she's included each artist's website address, so it's easy for you to get in touch with them. What's more, we should all follow Jessica's example, making sure we keep telling each other about the female conductors we've heard are great, as much as the men. It's critical we do this, given how few are represented by managers. If I really can't persuade you to think more about hiring female conductors, can I at least ask you to think carefully about how you're presenting those you do hire? Marketeers, here is a screen grab of a major British orchestra's website this month, illustrating those conductors coming to perform with them. It's 27 pictures of men. Just think for a moment how that must look to the young women on Alice Farnham's course. If you need another good reason to hire female conductors, consider this. Last year, the CBSO declared its biggest ever donation of half a million pounds. It wasn't exclusively for Mirga, but for a progressive organisation with a figurehead like that at its helm. Also last year, the Mellon Foundation gave Dallas Opera half a million dollars for its Institute for Women Conductors. So, if you really need that kind of motivation, there may be good money in it for you. But most of all, I ask you to think of your audience. Look outside and ask yourself what the world today wants to see. This weekend, we were given the most extraordinary sign of how your potential audience feels about gender equality. If we do not respond to that, we, the custodians of classical music, are frankly going to look like cavemen. We need to keep talking about this, sharing insights from those already finding ways to make a difference, and asking what else we can collectively, sensitively achieve. Every single one of us could do a bit better than we are. But of all the diversity issues we're addressing right now, this seems, to me, one of the easiest to solve. Please, let's fix this. Thank you very much.